Hi there, I'm Wangelein. Layering different sounds and instruments on top of each other is one of the most fundamental techniques in sound design, but also music production. Today I would like to show you a little series of tools that make this process just so much easier. It's lovely. It's called Quadra by UVI and it's just fucking cool. <laughs> Hi, here's a little disclaimer. The cool people over at UVI are sponsoring this video, but they're not making me say stuff. Just pay me to promote some tools that I already think are really awesome. Okay, now onto the rest of the video. The very first time you open up Quadra, it might look a tad bit overwhelming. There's all these knobs and pages, sliders and this thing. But it's actually quite easy to wrap your head around. The basic concept of Quadra is that you can load four different instruments and use expressive controls to blend between them and automate all kinds of parameters to bring your music to life. I really often use this exact technique in my music, but I've always had to do it all manually by setting up a bunch of instruments, linking MIDI data across them, automating individual effects and knobs in every single instance, all while trying to make it sound good. And on top of that, it's difficult as piss to change even one of the instruments in your stack, since you lose automation in the process and mm, it's a musician's glimpse into hell itself. And I'm not just making it sound like this because UVI is showering me in coins and treasure. I genuinely got really excited when I found out about Quadra. It's all I've ever wanted and so much more. Okay, so these four regions all represent their own little instruments. And this lets you choose one of countless sets of sounds like recorded instruments, synths, transient noises and so on. Over here we've got a selection of arpeggiator presets to make your notes do their own little thing on specific instruments, or just all of them at once. And right beneath that you can adjust the key range. This lets you include or exclude ranges of keys if you want a certain instrument to only play specific notes. These knobs let you send the instrument's audio to reverb and delay buses. And up here's the knob for keyboard balance. With this you can make the intensity of the notes get more or less intense going up or down the keyboard. Oh, and there's an octave control as well, which should be self-explanatory. In the center of this main window lies the shining bastion of this tool, a 2D controller panel that lets you blend between all four instruments with mm, unbelievable ease. Also, if you do a political compass test and put the results on this panel, it'll, it'll tell you whether you're a little bell or a tube. On top of all this, you can click on the panels numbered 1 to 4 at the top of the window and absolutely go ham with the detailed controls in here. You can adjust the ADSR curve, pitch and voicing settings, individual instrument expression settings and effects, and... 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 Oh, oh. There's just so much cool stuff crammed into here. I'm having like a great time just playing around with this and making super intricate sets of instruments. Ah, flippin' awesome, cool. <laughs> At the end of this chain of pages, you can adjust all kinds of effects like the reverb and delay buses, but also drive slash distortion, a compressor, equalizer, and a maximizer at the very end. I don't really use built-in arpeggiators at all. I'm more of a going ham in the piano roll kind of gal. But if you're the type of person to enjoy nice handcrafted note bleep loops, then the ARP button and the individual instrument controls will lead you to a lovely place. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. If you wish to switch all arpeggiators on or off, there's a global toggle button on the main page. Oh, and most importantly, there's randomized buttons. You can just click them and it'll switch out either all the instruments with new ones or it'll select new arpeggiator presets. I want randomized buttons everywhere. They're nice. Here's a little instrument preset I made with a couple of random ARP presets. And here's a bunch of random instruments as well.
These two little buttons swallowed hours of my life. I can never quite stop clicking them to see what other funky combination of notes and noises Quadra can spit out. It's, it's enchanting, really. So Quadra is an awesome tool, and even outside of a sponsorship like this, I would absolutely recommend it to you. There are two versions of Quadra available. One with a focus on muted sounds and harmonics, and another one for metal and wooden instruments. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to get it. A couple of weeks ago I released a little piece of music called Cash. I made it mostly using Quadra. In this second half of the video, I'm gonna deconstruct this track and show you all the instruments and layers of sounds that make it up. If you haven't heard it yet or would like to refresh it in your memory, feel free to pause the video here and listen to it on Spotify, Bandcamp or YouTube. And now under the track breakdown. At the very start I was once again just doodling around on my MIDI controller, trying to find some interesting melodies with a piano loaded up in contact. Pretty soon I stumbled upon some choppy sounding note chaos and began to build upon it. This is what that piano melody sounds like. I also added a big reverb onto this piano, which is muted at first but then fades in every time the notes take a break. It's a nice way to transition into the next little melody section, and over the course of this track deconstruction, you'll notice that I really expanded upon this idea of call and response with tiny risers. I layered three instances of quadra onto the piano, of which the first to play the exact same notes is the piano. The first one sounds like this, and the second one sounds like this. They're both processed with a hefty amount of OTT and stereo expansion. Quadra instrument number three is the plucky bass that I once again processed with OTT in a smidge of vocodex, with a self-vocoding preset that I made ages ago. In the track it sounds like this. On top of all this there's a string section playing staccato, once again mimicking the same notes as all the other instruments. These little clicky notes are yet another instance of Quadra, where I just hit the randomize button in the instrument selection until I got this muted and metallic sound. Afterwards I ran it into audio and processed it some more with manual automation, vocodex and a healthy heap of OTT. At the end I consolidated it all into one file, which you can hear here. This little percussion loop down here is the example audio made for one of my older sound design videos. Let me know in the comments if you recognize which video it's from. I've also got nail gun and gun gun noises adding extra oomph and punch to this already very chaotic and messy sounding section of the track. And of course, there's a nice amount of kick drums, hi-hats and crashes spicing up the intro. I designed a bunch of magic weapon sounds for one of my video games and I just slapped some of that into here. Last but not least, whenever all the melodic instruments take a breather and don't play for a moment, I've added all these super cool designed risers and suck bags to flow into the next bit. This is the kind of stuff you'd usually put in big cinematic trailers. And that's the entire intro. Here's what all of this sounds like in the track. After all this chaos, there's a brief moment where only the clicky noises from earlier are playing, together with some gentle impacts and one singular piano note. Just a few seconds later, I'm using the same quarter instruments as before to create some really nice sustained chords and dreamy notes. I blurred one of the instruments using FL's Edison, which sounds like this. Mm 
And the other instrument sounds like this. This little plucky bit that only briefly played some notes earlier in the track is now going fucking ham. And soon you'll realize that just a couple of minutes ago I kinda did a lie. I mentioned how I never use built in arpeggiators in Sims, but it turns out they're incredibly fun to use and make music with, which I discovered while making this track. Here's what that sounds like. Just moments later, we slowly move to the more intense parts of Cash. I don't really know if this next section could be considered a chorus, but kind of feels like it. I'm, I'm not really sure about this. You tell me. Anyway, the, the first thing that immediately jumps out is this weird distorted bass. It reminds me of like the horn of a giant ship or something. It gets more and more muffled throughout this part and and then later gets replaced by an absolutely bonkers bit of noise. I took the bass instruments and distorted them with an ungodly chain of effects plugins. The resulting crispy tale of hellish static is what you can hear now. Oh, I also designed this clap sound a long time ago, and every time I use it in my music, it reminds me of that one video where the two Spider-Men are having a great time and clap each other on the butt. Now that I put this image in your head as well, I hope you enjoy thinking of Ass Schmack Spider-Man <laughs> every time you listen to my music. I use this clap all over the final sections of the track. I've already mentioned this really briefly earlier, but I like to put video game sound effects into my music. Specifically, sound effects I've designed for my own games. One of my game projects is called Vivi Dairy, and I used a bunch of those sounds in this track. Here's some examples. At the very end of this track, I introduce one final instrument. I pulled up an instance of Massive and designed this little acid elite in it. Completely unprocessed, it sounds like this. <laughs> And here's what all the plugins in my effects chain do. Vocodex does the self-vocoding thing I've already explained a million times before. OTT is yet another plugin you've definitely heard me mention in the past and even in this video. It's a super powerful and free multiband compressor. Wave Shaper shapes the waves. It's basically a simple distortion tool. This EQ over here makes the sound less harsh on the ears by dampening the high end a ton, and I'm also using it to keep the low end clean. Grow speed chops up the audio signal with a simple gate. And Fruity Delay 3 in combination with Ozone Emender 2 are here to make it sound nice and white in the stereo field. And that's everything. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more. And as always, I would like to thank all of my lovely patrons for supporting me and my silly work. So huge thanks to Catherine, Kujo Sound, Great, Captain Bobs, Misty Burgess, Foxy Vivi, Grey Figment, Jane the Human, Sophia Figueroa, Teddy Edwards, Declan, Windu, Ellie Spectacular, Silver, Hexagon, Sainad, Alias, Andy Chamberlain, Jacob Dias, Alison Madden, Vivian, Shaunak Shirgaukai, Dexty112, Sora, Benjamin Burns, Dive to the Heart, Mikkel Armstrup, Jay Manning, Flower Gothic, Ram, Romy Wolf, Matt MML Lucas, Rainbow Messenger, Adrian Bolden, Jazz Mikkel, Dolman, DDX.exe, Greg Borenstein, Borenstein, 
NM1024, Protowave, Reader, Tia Stanley, Day, Ramey Tagebat, Connor Elliott, Gatling Jacob, Blue V12, Toffer and Selmo, Lily Lennon, Jolini, William Willingham, Grinsekotze, Hexana, Schuyler, Pemeralis, Needless Mustard, <laughs> Matt B, Gween, Gween, <laughs> Kai Christensen, Quill, Smart Ash, John Bliss, Wise Guru, and Baku. Again, thank you so, so much to all of you, and wow, this was quite a video to make. Uh, I'm gonna take a big nap <laughs> for like 20 hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna nap and sleep a bunch. Thanks for watching. Bye.